Aids to Devotion by Andrew Murray Chapter 17 A Review Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 Blessed is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms in Christ. In our epistle, the expression, the heavenly realms, is used four times. In those heavenly realms, God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. He has set Christ at his own right hand. He has made us sit with Christ. The manifold wisdom of God is to be made known through the church to principalities and powers. We are to be fitted for wrestling against the spiritual hosts of wickedness. The life of the Christian is regarded in its spiritual and heavenly aspect. He cannot live it except in the power of the heavenly world. This epistle has been called the Alps of the New Testament. As one peak rises above another, so the Apostle delights to lead us through the heavenly truths of election and redemption, of the mystery of God's will and his purpose in Christ, of our resurrection and ascension with Christ, our new creation and all our glory as the body of Christ. And as the light of the Holy Spirit shines upon one truth after another, we learn how truly divine and heavenly our life on earth can be. We have studied the twelve passages in which the Holy Spirit is mentioned. Let us now seek to gather all their teaching into one and see if we can frame a picture of the man called to live by this heavenly standard. 1. The sealing of the Spirit. The believer has been sealed in Christ and into him by the Holy Spirit of promise, the down payment of his inheritance the pledge of what he is and can become in Christ, the divine assurance that every promise can be made true. He has the seal of God upon his forehead. His whole being bears the stamp of the Holy Spirit. 2. The first great grace of the Spirit is that he enlightens our eyes to know correctly what God has called us to and what the incomparable greatness of God's power is to enable us to live worthy of that calling. The Holy Spirit reveals the working of the might of God's power in raising Christ from the dead to the throne of glory as the pledge of what God will each day work in us. 3. The sealed one, brought near by the blood, lives in the holy place, lives through the Spirit, a life of perfect and abiding access to God in Christ Jesus. 4. The sealed one no longer lives for himself, but as a member of the great spiritual temple built to be a dwelling place of God through the Spirit. The Spirit links him to the chief cornerstone and to all his fellow saints. 5. The sealed one knows the mystery of Christ among the Gentiles and counts them as fellow heirs, to whom all the unsearchable riches of Christ are to be made known. He lives for the kingdom and the ingathering of the heathen as Christ's inheritance. 6. The sealed one ever learns that it is only by the direct interposition of an almighty power that he can live his life in the heavenly realms. He ever returns to pray that the power of the Spirit may strengthen him mightily, that Christ may dwell in his heart by faith, and he, with all the saints, may be filled with love and with all the fullness of God. He asks for nothing less for himself and for others than that God, in his infinite power, may reveal his Son in them. 7. The sealed one bears the mark of the likeness of Jesus, the humble and gentle one. He walks worthy of his heavenly calling, in all humility and gentleness, maintaining the unity of the Spirit unbroken. He knows that he can do this because God strengthens him with might in the inner man. 8. The sealed one knows that there is one body and one Spirit, and that his one calling is to live for the work of ministering to the saints in building up the body of Christ in love. 9. The sealed one seeks above everything never to grieve the Holy Spirit of God. How should he dare to break the seal that God has set upon him, the spirit of a holy life? It is only thus that he can partake of all the blessings in the heavenly realms in Christ. He cultivates a tender spirit. 10. Be filled with the Spirit. 
The more the believer knows the blessedness of the sealing of the Spirit and all the work that he does, all the more the desire awakens to yield himself in utter emptiness to his control. At the same time, he feels the need of a deeper vision of the riches of that grace which the blessed Spirit is given to dispense. He sees that to be filled with the Spirit means nothing else than peace and joy and health and strength. 11. The sealing of the Spirit includes the calling to be a soldier and to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. The believer begins to understand why such divine power is promised him. It is that with the sword of the Spirit he may wrestle against the powers of evil and rescue men for Christ and His service. 12. The sealed ones know to obey the call to a life of continual prayer, watching with all perseverance for all saints and for all ministers of the word. The Spirit makes it possible for them to be true soldiers and prayer warriors. Blessed is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms in Christ. Let us think of the twelve-fold blessing until we realize what a salvation God has prepared for us. A believer, sealed by the Spirit, taught by the Spirit to know the divine power working in him, kept in the full consciousness of perfect and abiding access to the Father, united with all his fellow saints in the one temple as the dwelling place of God, led into the mystery of Christ among the Gentiles, strengthened with might by the Spirit in the inner man to own Christ dwelling in the heart and to be filled with all the fullness of God. And then, coming down into his everyday life, he walks in all humility and gentleness, keeping the unity of the Spirit and in the power of that Spirit ministers to the building up of the body in love. Seeking never to grieve the Spirit, but ever to be filled with Him, He fulfills the law of love in all His daily life. He is strong in the Lord, and the power of His might to fulfill His destiny in wrestling with the powers of darkness, in the use of the Word, and prayer for all saints. It needs time, and thought, and prayer, and above all quiet waiting on the Spirit of God, for anyone to get the vision, and to keep it, of the Spirit-sealed, Spirit-taught, Spirit-strengthened, Spirit-filled believer as here set before us. It needs a turning away from self and the world to allow God to work in us all His purpose according to the counsel of His own will. And let us not forget the purpose with which we undertook the study of the Epistle. Let us believe in the divine standard of the Christian life it sets before us. Let us believe in the almighty power of God, by which alone, but most surely, it can become ours. Let us believe that if we are in earnest in seeking deliverance from the carnal standard, we can count upon the infinite mercy of God to work in us what otherwise appears to be utterly hopeless, a life filled with the Spirit.'